All right. So for my last story here tonight, and uh, it was actually meant to be covered last week, but some things happened and uh, it ended up not getting covered last week. So we're covering it this week. But So many people have been asking us about this, and I've been waiting to cover it because it is so disturbing. It's just mind-blowingly crazy, okay? We have the Ruby Frankie and Jody Hildebrandt updates, okay? They've been in front of the judge. They, I guess we'll start with ruby because there's some weird twists there that i'm curious what people think about so ruby frankie accepted a plea deal okay Mm -hmm. within that plea deal there were some rules to it the first one was to testify against jody hildebrandt and ruby frankie agreed to testify against jody hildebrandt now she not only was willing to testify against her, but I believe her approach is to straight up 100% and totally throw her under the bus and blame her for all of her actions. Duh. Yeah. Uh, for sure that's what it is. Yeah. Do you think Ruby Frankie has any kind of integrity? No. Can take any kind of accountability? No. <laughs> that's a funny word to her. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And yeah, the, the certified mental fitness trainer, (laughs) that's such a stupid (laughs) title, (laughs) certified mental (laughs) fitness trainer. Tell me, when did you, did she think that sounded smart or catchy? That was Jody Hildebrandt and Ruby Frankie together. Yeah. A certified mental fitness trainer oh man that's bad that's real bad but anyways so um yeah so she agreed to testify no now the other stipulation to her plea was that uh she made a statement about what she did and that's that's a pretty common thing that we see that uh they have to do is make like a public statement of your wrongdoings you know what i mean now this is horrible stuff actually i had to take pictures on my phone here um of her direct statement let me see here okay have you heard it <laughs> no all right plea agreement Statement from approximately May 22nd of 2023 until August 30th of 2023 in Washington County, Utah, the defendant Ruby Frankie intentionally or knowingly inflicted and allowed another adult and allowed another adult to inflict serious injuries upon her children that were ages 9 and 11 to 12, uh, as more fully described below. Count one, the defendant's actions involved the physical torture of RF. Initially, RF was forced to do physical tasks for hours, the boy, uh, and days at a time. These included wall sits, carrying boxes full of books up and down stairs, and working outside. Eventually, he was forced to do outside labor without shoes in the summer heat. He was forced to stand in the direct sunlight for several days. He was forced to remain outside at all hours of the day and night for extended periods of time. These actions resulted in repeated and serious sunburns with blistering and slowing skin. He was denied adequate water for several of the days. He was required to remain in the summer heat. And he was punished when he secretly consumed water. He was denied sufficient food, and when given food, he was given very plain meals, rice or chicken, while others in the house ate regularly, regular and more flavorful meals. Many times the, the, uh, oh man, are these mixed up now? I freaking does that all the time. So, uh, 
it goes on to say that he had attempted to run away, okay? And what they did is they they bound his arms or, and legs at different times. And then there were other times where they bound his arms to another person, another adult, okay? Many times the bindings included using two sets of handcuffs, one on RF's wrist and another one on his ankles, effectively hog tying, you know, tying them together. Uh, at times... With him laying on his stomach, ropes were used to tie the two sets of handcuffs together so that his arms and lower legs were lifted off the ground. Bindings resulted in injuries to his wrists and ankles where the handcuffs cut through the skin and damaged the muscle tissue. These injuries were treated with homeopathic remedies and were covered with duct tape. Then the bindings were placed on top of the duct tape. Specifically, instances. Uh, of abuse were committed by the defendant included one kicking him while wearing boots holding his head under water and cutting off oxygen by placing her hands over his nose and mouth the actions described above caused severe emotional harm due to the fact that they began in May and escalated throughout the summer months. Additionally, the defendant and another adult regularly sought to indoctrinate him and convince him that he was evil and possessed and that he needed to willingly be obedient to avoid punishments and that the punishments were necessary to repent. He was also told that everything that was being done to him were acts of love. Uh, the defendant's actions were also caused severe, or count three, the defendant's actions also caused severe harm to the, the daughter. Other than binding and in specific instances of abuse to RF was subjected to, EF was subjected to the same treatment as her brother. She was isolated and forced to do physical tasks, remain outside, denied food and water. She was also told repeatedly that she was evil and that the punishments were necessary to be obedient and repent, and that she was convinced that she was evil and needed to go through these things to repent. Um, the defendant's actions caused two or more physical injuries to EF. She was forced to work outside in the heat barefoot. She was also forced to run barefoot on dirt roads for extended periods of time. EF's feet were repeatedly injured and damaged, and she was repeatedly sunburned. Um, when examined on August 30th, these wounds were apparent by scabs, blisters, and sewing skin. Ugh. Yeah. Crazy, right? So they went way harder on the boy. But still pretty hard. I don't know, her. man. I don't know. And that's only because I have a little bit more knowledge than you do. So let's get through this first. So I was absolutely blown away by that. So they were not only straight up physically abusing these kids. like They were torturing them. They were torturing them every day, day in and day out. Lack so, of sleep, lack of food, physical Torture. Not letting them sleep inside, not eating them, keeping them outside working in the sun without adequate water. I mean, their lives are on the line right there, okay? They're and making their minds as weak as possible, too. It. That's the goal. These are adults, though. Like, what is the point of making their minds weak, dude? So that they can... They can force them to do what they want. They're creating sociopaths. You're creating serial killers. Yeah, you, you're That's, creating extremely damaged people. Yes. Are these adults not seeing that? Because they themselves are psycho. It's crazy. It's absolutely nuts. I was blown away when I heard that. Like those details, I wasn't expecting that. What the the couple things I wasn't expecting, like. Was I thinking, okay, outside working a long time in the sun? Yeah. I wasn't expecting to hear forced to stay outside in the sun without clothes on multiple days to where you're getting sunburns to the point of blisters and continuing to remain them outside in the sun without water. Heat stroke, death. Like, okay. 
I wasn't expecting to hear uh, held their head underwater, suffocating them, or having them handcuffed, spread eagle, and then suffocating them. <laughs> Blown away. That's insanity. Do you think Jody has some kind of? She has some kind of gratification. I I don't I don't know. Like I a serial not killer. One, I am not one person that feels like Ruby was indoctrinated into this. I think Ruby was a willing participant. Was a willing participant. Absolutely. I do not think she gets to point the finger at Jody and say it was all her, the bad woman that she made me. Well, do. I believe Ruby was abusive before Jody was ever in the picture. She it, was. She absolutely was. And I hope they but take that into consideration. They better. And you know, I, I just wonder, because Jody's done this to multiple kids in the past, her own niece. We heard it from her own niece. The she was staying outside the, yeah. Yep. No all water, of these things. Duct tape. Yeah. Duct tape on her mouth and being tied up and all these things. So it makes me wonder if Jody, with those specific things, gets off on it somehow. And then Ruby hooked up with her and was already abusive and heard this whole philosophy Jody has and was like, yeah, let's so, do it. There's two types of people in the world. There, There is the sociopathic abuser, okay, that is intelligent and high, has a high enough IQ to understand they're different than the rest of society. And they're so smart that they can pretend to be normal while being on a constant power trip and taking advantage of people in every way they can. I don't think Jody's that. Okay. I think she's the other one where she truly believes what she's doing is right. And she feels like she needs to do this because she has her own urges inside of her, like lesbian urges or, or gay urges or whatever. There's a reason why she targets the woman and abuses the man. Okay. And I, I think that they have something to do with some kind of sexual desire. And I don't think she's intelligent, uh, not to that level. Um, and I think that she's constantly trying to make every other person around her, except for the women that she's attracted to, um, more evil than she feels about herself. Hmm. That's what I believe I'm seeing here. And I don't think it matters that it's a kid. I don't think it matters that it's an adult. I don't think any of that has to do with it because it is a selfish obsession of hers to constantly need to reapprove her own insecurities and, and evilness that she feels about her own self by making everyone else appear more evil to herself. And I think this is how she does it. And Weird. I think she was attracted to Ruby Frankie. Oh, yeah. And Ruby was already an abuser. And although Jody Hildebrandt had constantly separated men and women through her whole career, which is classified as abuse, it was never to this extent until she came in contact with someone that was just as much of an abuser as she was. And they exponentially m multiplied. Oh, yeah, it got like this is definitely worse than her niece's accounts by far. Yeah, way her worse. niece's accounts were already really bad, and this is this took it to another level. It sure did. This took it to a life threatening level, not a lifelong trauma level. These kids are lucky to be alive right now. They are. So taking all in that all of that into account, okay. So uh, Ruby Frankie took the plea deal first and agreed to um, uh, testify against. No wonder uh, that neighbor was Jody. in tears. Yeah, dude, it must have been awful with the sunburns and like all everything, and then like I, it, I it doesn't and the one, wounds. One sentence about the the daughter doesn't do it justice enough. I don't know if you guys have ever ran barefoot without prepping your feet to run barefoot because there are people out there that run barefoot like that's a thing but they've gotten their feet prepped like 
months, if not years of time with calluses built up and stuff where they can do it. You take somebody that is normally wears shoes and socks all the time. Then you put them outside on a dirt road and tell them run and you can't stop. Dude, you're shredding your feet. Like They're going to bleed. If not to the bone, if not to the bone. Okay. Like that is horrible abuse on top of it, you know, for, for her now getting to Jody's stuff. So a lot of because Ruby Frankie took the plea first, a lot of people were wondering, was Jody going to take the plea? Does she have any options to try and get out of this in this situation since Ruby is choosing to essentially flip on her, right? Well, I, I, I'm actually surprised that she did take a plea. Jody took a plea, but she agreed to take a plea too. And similar, uh, a, a similar agreement here where she had to come out and admit to what she did. Um, I don't have those specific details because they're very similar to the same account right here of what we just heard. However, Jody also talked about uh, further and continued abuse into the daughter. And one of the things that Jody made her do uh, when while Ruby was present, all right, was Jody had added to her uh, plea and statement that Ruby didn't have in hers was uh, more focus on the girl and Ruby was stepped away. I don't really understand why, but she was present during that. And one thing that she said that she did was she made her over and over and over and over again jump into a cactus. What? Yeah. Who made her do that? Jody. Jody made her do it? Yep. Ruby was right there next to her, but yeah. So that they did it all together. Yeah, essentially. Yep. In addition to the cactus. That's, I can't. Gosh. Yeah. Weird Mormon cult stuff, man. It just re that reminds me of the Valo case, dude. If this if that little boy hadn't escaped, this would be Valo all over again. I agree a hundred percent. I agree with you a hundred percent. Yeah. But they would be being asked, where's the kids? Where's the kids? And then you would find them buried somewhere. Yep, buried behind her house, honestly is what I think would have ended up happening here. She was yep. literally taking them to that point. Yeah. And Jody and Ruby going on a lover's run together. Yep. So very similar. Yeah. And I don't understand it. I don't get it. I think this is one of the worst things that I've ever heard. And they, I'm, I commend that justice system there that, they make them come out and make this statement publicly because this will follow them forever. If they ever get out of prison, they better never get out of prison, dude. Like either of them. I already see mainstream media and news favoring Jody to be more guilty. And I don't agree with that. No, I think they are equally guilty in this situation just because Jody has a past, which all those people can, sue her after all this where they will now have the proof and backing whatever they need to sue her she can be held accountable for those things separately but those things don't make her more guilty this is guilty enough in my opinion to never be let out for both of them they straight up tortured people like i feel like this could be attempted murder i agree it could be attempted murder i think it could be attempted murder with uh holding head underwater suffocating like and many the, counts. uh the outside not giving water heat stroke that's serious dude heat stroke is so serious i feel like they should have multiple stacks of attempted murder and i don't know what you charge for torture but I think they have a potential here. Where is it? I wrote it down. Has a potential uh, of 60 years. Okay. So they plead down to four charges 
And this is what's interesting. This is the only thing that I'm worried about. And there was an expert that talked about this. Okay. So Utah has an indeterminate sentence where uh, it's a type of custodial sentence that consists of a range of years, such as five to 10 and not fixed time, which means the convicted person's release date is left open to the board of, uh, what's it called? The board of something. It's, It's the parole board. It's the parole board. So basically... A judge is this just there to say you're guilty or innocent, and then uh, that says, okay, well, now you're going to do time. Then you go to the prison where the parole board is, and the parole board says, this is how much time you're doing. The judge doesn't say that. Yep. And then in Utah, uh, 40% of that time consecutive on each is what they can serve. So an expert was estimating like two to three, like was estimating four to eight years. Yeah. I don't agree with that. Well, I think that's what's going to happen. They took plea deals. I think that's what's going to happen. I just don't agree with it. I think, okay, they took plea deals and I, I, they got two charges knocked off. Give them 30 years. I'm serious. I I'm know. not playing. I know. The maximum 60, give them 30. Maybe you'll get out in this lifetime. Not definitely you'll get out in this lifetime. Maybe. No, I think they should have got life, both of them. I don't even think they should have been allowed to take plea deals. I don't think a plea deal should have even been offered. Well, I don't want to overcharge, and the kids didn't die, so I don't. I don't think that child abuse warrants a life term when our life terms aren't even always life terms. They're like twenty five to life, but I think torture- I do think thirty years is fair. Yeah. I mean, I think torturing kids to the point where you could kill them and over and over and over for an extended amount of time makes you one of the most heinous people on the planet. I agree with and you. And that makes you such a danger that I do think you should be in prison for life. I I agree with the one of the most heinous people on this planet. However, there's a whole bunch of other factors that come into play with that. Because while me and you understand that they were risking their lives in each of those situations, can you prove that they knew they were risking their lives? Because if they didn't, then the intention isn't there. So it just brings in a whole bunch of other factors. So they're disgusting. I don't want them to be out in this lifetime. But I also don't think it's fair for somebody that commits child abuse to be like, you're just going to be locked away forever. Yeah, it de- it's the factors surrounding this specific case. I'm not applying that to all child abuse because I think there's instances where somebody doesn't deserve to go to prison for the rest of their life. But Yeah. Hmm. But I'm curious what you guys think. This was absolutely awful. I hope that uh, you got the update and we will get to see them locked away and that key thrown out the window, never to be returned until they're ready to bury their bodies. It's a lot worse than I thought. Oh, it's way worse than I thought. Like, way worse than I thought, dude. I If I had to give... An estimation. I was thinking that being tied to the ground, hogtied like that, was the bad part. I I maybe expected to see kicked or something like that. Honestly, I didn't expect to see an aggressive act like act literally hit or kicked. Um, I just didn't expect to see any of that. Literally any of it. Maybe the carrying books up and down the stairs. Okay, like corporal punishment. Like I would have expected to see that there, but I expected suffocating them by putting their head under underwater, uh, 
handcuffing him to the ground and then holding their nose and mouth and suffocating, like <laughs> forcing him to stay out in that hot desert sun for multiple days without water and burning on top of burns on top of burns. Like, gosh. I just thought that Dude. it was mostly going to be like taking away food, like we saw with Ruby's videos in the past. And like tying them there so they couldn't have freedom. Like that's and and like trying to indoctrinate them. Like I didn't think it was going to be all that corporal punishment in addition to torture. Like Yeah. I mean the it's real bad. Like I It's as bad as it gets. It's as bad but as it could possibly get. Let me know what you guys think about it. They are monsters. And they are monsters and we'll talk to you soon.